everybody, and welcome down to another episode of Zetro's Toxic Vault, and we're back. Alongside myself, I got Mr. Walter Morgan with me, and we're back, Walt. If you're seeing this, we're back, and this is Thursday, uh, April 22nd. Yeah, well, that's when we're filming it, and we're going yeah. back to filming it now, and this was kind of what we uh, started the show as, you know, with the full visual and all that kind of stuff, and this is how I wanted it, and again, like, um, we we had worked with our producer, Mr. Wayne Marsala, for so many uh well, since the beginning of the show, and he had other projects. That Two he seasons. To do. Two seasons. And so, I don't know, is this the third season? This is uh, the third season, I think. Uh, it's not going to be a new intro, as you noticed. <laughs> but uh, we are working with another fellow, Mr. Tim Healy, who's helping Walter and I learn the ins and outs of, of recording and editing and that sort of thing. It's not something you can learn in a day, but uh, we're going to nail it, and we're going to get this stuff down so we can continue the interviews and and we're going to start doing that from here on out. I'm going to start booking people in the show so they can come out and we can get back to that stuff again. So I did like going live. Uh, that was fun. It was great to answer all of your comments and, and all of your questions live. And I'm not saying we won't do that again. We, we had fun with it, but I believe that my show was built pretty much on this nice, really visual and really good sound and, and that's kind of nice. Well, set. you can talk to each other this way, right? Creepy set. Besides, yeah, we're across, and, and it's better for me for interviews and that sort of thing. So it's um, more natural. It, it kind of felt that way since um, I, I didn't get um, a guest on here today because Walter and I wanted to go over some things. There are some things that we wanted to um, uh, talk about, that things that are going on with the uh, in, in our camp and, and, and things that are happening uh, to us personally and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, um, that was Monday, right? Was it uh, Exodus cancer stricken drummer Tom Hunting needs help with mounting medical costs? Uh, that was just put up two days ago, and Gary Holt started to go fund me, right? You know, uh, they asked, you know, for 20,000 as of just two days, it's over 50,000. It's incredible. Well, you know, like we were talking in uh, when we were having lunch today, and we were talking about, you know, Tom is a very solid guy. I've never heard anybody say a bad thing about him, and I've never heard Tom say a bad thing about anybody. So it kind of goes hand in hand, and, and I, I, I really want to thank all of the fans and all of the musicians that didn't Kirk Hammett, uh, didn't you say Kirk yes, Hammett? Yes, he, he's the top uh, donor right now. What, $5,000? 5, and then also Chris Jericho uh, donated as well, right? Right, he was the yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, and there was some, you know, even so, Boar Boy. Boar Boy from... Uh, from um, and some bands like Immolation, Sacred Reich. Yeah, people are, people bands are showing their put love. So um, that, that brings us to another thing. I mean, obviously Tom's going to have to have some treatment and and that's actually already started and um he actually told me that he wanted people to know so that if anybody's experiencing this kind of things you know he wanted to open their eyes and i thought that was great i think that's better than i i know you want to keep it private and keep it to yourself and it, and it is a very heavy situation when something like this happens but you know you you definitely want to um um you know embrace that person and make sure that they're comfortable through it and you know so, this, this reminds me also like when chuck was stricken with cancer also that's 20 years ago now yeah and you know before anything else you know you just want to get their head so they can just think about what they're fighting not about living and paying the mortgage paying the car payments all this or whoever they're taking responsible for if you can just clear that part off the plate then they can just fight on you know what i mean and do their treatments and not w have so much worry and, and a lot of it is anxiety and what you're thinking in your head and we love Tom, and um, I know he's gonna fight this hard. And you know, it, he's an incredible he's guy. He's one of the strongest guys I've ever met, if not the strongest guy. I mean, his training regimen. He lives in the mountains, and his training regimen is straight up out of Rocky IV. I mean, he chops wood, and he really chops wood. I could chop about three fucking logs if I was lucky, and I'm done. He'll sit there and chop for hours. He's a very strong guy, and we all know that you know he's gonna beat this. And which now comes to the next thing. Will this delay the record? Yes, it will. From what I'm understanding now is the record will not be released until November. And that just goes without saying. I mean, we want to get Gary Tom Holt better. Released that. And so um, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm like the rest of you guys. A lot of the times I learn it like you're learning it. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm, I, my ears not necessarily 
to the label or to the management's grindstone when things like that happen. I'm not necessarily well, aware, so but I, I I understand it totally. I do. Jerry says when he kicks this ass, cancer's ass, and gets and is able to recover and from the treatments and everything, then worry about music, right? Exactly, exactly. So that's basically where the focus is with that right now. So I know that a lot of you guys have said. Oh, it's supposed to be out released out this summer, and it was. It was going to be released this summer, but this is, you know, kind of put a damper in things a little bit. So the decision from the band and the decision from management and the label and everybody, I mean, it makes sense. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a career-defining record. You guys have not heard it yet, but it's a career-defining album. And you once you hear it, you will understand that, and it will it makes sense why we waited you know, so that he can be part of this because we fully, we, we, nobody's thinking he's not. He's going to fully recover from this and we'll be out, you know, kicking your asses once again. So I think that goes from anybody. If it was anybody, you would give them the respect that they need to recover. I agree. I at, mean, this, you know, at this I, time in your life. A couple you know of years saying? ago, I, I remember Bruce Dickinson had some had some problems and, and Iron Maiden didn't go out. Remember, I think he had tongue cancer or something like that, a little piece on his, and they didn't go out. Uh, just recently, Dave from Megadeth uh, had some had some problems, and Megadeth even on the the Mega Cruise they didn't even actually play on the, on the Mega Cruise, so they couldn't because he was sick. So it, that's just the types of things that we're faced with when we do these type, you know, when this happens. And again, metalheads, we're getting older. You know what I mean? And we're more susceptible to shit going on on our bodies now. And there was many years where we fucking. Rode the pine very hard, you know what I mean. And the well, dip, and also the scales, he, was, you know as Tom, I mean? as Tom was saying, you know, the best thing you can do for yourself is to get a physical every year, and they get the blood test, and uh, they do tests on it, and they can tell right away if you're fighting, your body's fighting anything. Right. So that's the best way to do this. Uh, yeah, as you get older, go see your doctor. You must go see your doctor. I know you feel good, but as we get older, sometimes you don't feel it necessarily. Chuck didn't. When Chuck went in, Chuck told me. He had just moved to Antioch, and he was just going to visit the new doctor, and that's how they saw something. He wasn't feeling sick at all. So right. these things happen. So that's where we're going to go from there. And um, and the good news is that Tom does say uh, physically he feels good. He looks great physically. I mean, I was just with him, you know, the right before he started treatment. We had the birthday party for him, and, and he looks great, and he's ready to kick the sass, and everybody around him, myself, the band, you know, Gary, everybody's behind him. Lee, Jack, Robin, everybody's, we're going to kick this ass. His wife, Ursula, is a saint. I mean, she's she's uh, such a positive being. So it's all going to be really, really good. Uh, you know, it's too bad that this had to happen, but, you know, it's part of life. And we, and we, we deal with these things in life, and we'll get through them. In Exodus, we'll be back. No problem. All right. So what did you want to talk about next, Steve? What else we got on the table? Well, you, you, I'll let well, you talk. Actually, um, actually um, I want to thank everybody for coming in on the live stream for ACDZ. That was a couple of weeks ago. We did really well. All of the people that, that tipped us, I know, like uh, uh, Trish, Trish Aguilar, you tipped us well. Um, um, there were so many people that, that kicked us down. And, and, and thank you guys for coming in. We're thinking about doing another Crystal. one. Crystal. Crystal Kensel, of course. She, she's our, like our biggest supporter. You know, one of our biggest supporters, Claire. Claire. Claire's another big supporter. We always, we always uh, mention the people that are fans of, of of the bands and the fans of the show that really support it, and we appreciate all you guys all over the world. You know, Metal Dam seventy eight. He's always chiming in. We always, we always hear from him. So there's so many of you guys that do that chime in. And I wanted to thank you guys for that as well. So. You know, Walter has a couple well, of music things. Well, we have a couple of music, but maybe you'd like to talk a We've little bit about We've been back to the movies. That's right. So I'd like you to say what I've you see. Back. I would to, check it out. They opened up the movies like two weeks ago, and I've already been like five fucking times. I saw, I saw I've seen everything. I mean, I'm running out of movies to see right now. Good name. Them. Let's hear. Okay, it. I went and saw Godzilla vs. Kong. You liked it. Good, of course. Always love anything with, with the two Titans in their collateral damage. You know, I'm a Godzilla fan. I love Kong. I'm a Godzilla fan, though. I, I, I always like the villains. Uh, I went and saw Nobody with uh, Bob Odenkirk. You know him from Better Call Saul. And it was one of those kind of kind of quiet guy, uh, special ops guy. who They mess with him, and then he just fucks everybody up. 
that one was kind of good. And then I seen um, I seen the unholy. The unholy was good. Great story. Not all that scary. Well, maybe a little bit. Some people would think it it is, but a really good scary evil story. I like that. Um, went and saw the Marksman with Liam Neeson. Good movie, but Liam, you're getting a little old to play a fucking tough guy. He's always playing so, that part. I, I mean, okay, I, I'm gonna give, that give way. him taken. But damn, Liam, you looked really fucking old in this one. And uh, I think it's about time I was to start thinking... hitting the straight to video uh, stuff like Bruce Willis's right now because you're almost there. And then I saw In the Earth, and that was kind of a what sci fi? A sci fi horror flick. It had a really good story to it, uh, if you're into that kind of thing. So, yeah, I've been to the movies for like five times in two fucking weeks. I I've been jonesing. You guys know because I do the movies reviews and you hate them. You always say, why don't I just get to do the interviews? Because it's my show and I like to do them. I always wanted to be a movie interviewer, so these episodes don't watch. I don't care. I just like to do them. You know what I mean? Well, I get it. That's why I send you to movies, don't I? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, now that send we're it. back and... I just got my second vaccine shot on Monday, so, you know. Anyway, what I've seen is on Amazon Prime, and I've been on a zombie horror movie kick, so I've seen Alone with Tyler Posey and Donald Sutherland, and that's a 2020 movie. I saw The Night Eats the World. That's a French zombie movie, 2018. The Train to Bazwan is 2016. That's Korean good. zombie movie. That was very good. Train to Bazwan's good. And Overload, 2018, produced I by love J.J. Abrams. Oh, that's a great. But those movie. were all on uh, Amazon yeah, Prime. They were. Oh, now did you see uh, Borat or Coming to America, the two sequels? Oh, uh, no, I haven't. I, uh, oh, they're, they're both in. great. I, I, they're I will both get to really, that. really good. They did them really good. I like that. Right. So part of the movie news too. I just want to throw this by you because Rob Zombie is rebooting of the Monsters could be a Peacock exclusive. So Peacock's a new station. It's a pay thing or whatever. Well, he's doing the I Monsters. Think. He's doing the Monsters. And uh, he's a huge Monsters fan. And his wife is, of course, going to be Lily. Of course she is. And Jeff Daniel Phillips as Herman Must Munster. And, Jeff Daniels? Uh, well, it says D Jeff Daniel Phillips. So it's another. It's, not Jeff eh, no, no, but close, huh? That would be cool if he did. I guess so. Who's going to play Grandpa? Uh, they have a, a list, but uh, they have uh, Cassandra Elvira Peterson's list. In it. As anyway, who? As Grandpa? Well, no. She's Are they going to call her Grandma now and change it? You know, as we know, The Monsters aired on CBS for two seasons in 66. Yep. That's right. And uh, he's we'll see what this is because we know he's 65 been... 65 and 66. Rob Zombie's been tight-casted with horror movies, right? That's He's had eight movies. They're all horror movies. And he's trying to... He says it's really tough for him to break out of that yeah, genre. Yeah, because it's, it's comedy horror. But on that. Also, it's, someone would throw him some millions to make a horror movie... And they say, wait a minute, you want to make an autobiography or something? They don't, mm, I don't know if I trust you. But I, that's what I feel of that. Anyway, he's uh, directed eight feature films. That's incredible in itself. All right, so that's the movie news. And now we'll go to some music news. Did you know that? I did not know. Did you know that? Did you know? Yeah, it is. is I, or what was it? What is your did segment? Did you know that? It is, did you know that? But this isn't a did you know that? No, but this anyway. This is just a did you know. Well, these are it's some. It's kind of like... Um, well, we're going to run. Did you know that light? You know, like, I, did you know that zero? No, but you know, the reason so why I don't want to tell him, like I, I started to, I was going to tell him what we're going to talk about today and some music news. And I threw out one and I didn't, I liked his honest response. And you know what? If you talk to him before the show, you don't get that honesty. So <clears throat> I decided to ax that. You'll just have to take it <clears throat> anyway. So did you know that Ted Nugent is a big skeptic of the uh, coronavirus? I know this story. And he just tested positive for it. So it is for what he thought was a fake hoax. But anyway, he says he could barely get out of bed. And, um, you know, he's making all sorts of uh, That's excuses. what they say when you get the with virus. I'm not saying the virus is not real. But but it's funny that Alex Skolnick hammered him. Uh, it's funny how certain music musicians can either be liberal or on one side or the other. And they have the power to turn people or have people listen to them. So... Both are on opposite fences there, but uh, I think Big it's funny. Time. All right. And, uh, and along with that, we have, uh, I'll take a Lamb of God, uh, Randy Blythe quote. I don't define myself as liberal, conservative, Democrat, or Republican. And, you know, like I just said, a lot of stars will say what they want. You're not like that. You're not a real 
political person. And I guess Randy Blythe means, you know, he doesn't, who cares what it is, you know? That's why I don't care. Why are you talking about politics on the vault? We well, usually don't talk just, about politics. Well, we, we didn't, though. Religion. I just read the statement. Uh, uh, oh, uh, and, and the virus. The last the time and you, now, we've you just doubted a story. Well, you doubted a story that uh, Ozzy Osbourne uh, was inducted in the WWE Wrestling Hall of Fame. Last Tuesday on April 6th. I didn't just... just, okay, just but I, know. Well, just I was it. more surprised. Than... He did, though. And uh, he, he did... Uh, uh, you know, he did... Uh, Singer made his debut at WrestleMania 2 in 86 when he and the captain, Lou Albano, supported the British Bulldogs. And he was part of it. So, you know... Okay, so he went to one match <laughs> on one fucking WrestleMania like 100 years ago. And China is not in the WWE Hall of Fame, but he is... Well, that's what happened. To... <laughs> I don't know how that's going to come across in the audio, but that's my, my new that's my new segment. It's called Fucking Raspberries. Bullshit. Okay. bullshit. So that Hall of Fame ties that's into the is... next one. And, and this came out today. I read Iron Maiden still trailing Tita Turdy, uh, Fela Kuti, and the Go-Go's in the 2021 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction fan vote. Okay, I don't think we don't the care fan about vote. fan votes. I don't but, think the fan vote has it, but but, but is that just, incredible? Can, can 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 I say this? Tina Turner, and the Go Go's, and Fila Kuti could all play a venue, and there wouldn't be a half as many people as Iron Maiden would play a fucking stadium sold out. Okay, so I don't know if that has anything to fan vote, but when Iron Maiden plays a concert, they play to stadiums. Sold out. So I don't know. Is that influence enough on people to put you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Uh, I think so. Okay. I, mean, I know that they must have sold. I know that records I, in the Go Go's. And I'm not going. Knows? I'm not going to pound on bands Tina that Turner's are in, a great the, legend. in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Right. But um, I know that that the band Radiohead is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and Motorhead is not. So. Okay. I knew I'd what get the a... hell is wrong there? I don't know. You tell me. Okay. Which slips us to the next thing. Did you know that? Raspberries again. <laughs> Lately, it's been a thing. And this is uh, two things have been in, in the news. Uh, the Offsprings, Dexter Holland is the main guy in it. He's still happy with his decision to sell the band's catalog for $35 million. And hold it. One, before you say anything. And Judas Priest, Glenn Tipton, re recently sold 50% interest in all his song catalog. Um, to reach music. So, that's the thing. How much did he get? Uh, didn't really say, but Ooh. he's battling 30, Parkinson's, right? 35 mil, a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, 35 the, million, dollars, a lot of money. Uh -huh. What do you think? Atta boy, Dex. <laughs> I mean, Good job. You can't take it with you, okay? <laughs> and and are you really going to get that big, or are you really going to hit it where one of those songs is going to uh -huh. fucking net you 35 million? But you may be good able job, to, Dexter. to invest well done. That's the 35. Good business, man. 30, you can invest that 35 million, right? And make it more within the time that maybe the music. That's maybe. how I rationalize it. Maybe. I thought that was interesting, huh? All right. All give, right. Me, give me two more stories and then we'll get out of here. Okay. How about George Lynch says he was up for guitarist position in Ozzy Osbourne's band on three different occasions? Did you know that? That I did not know. And why didn't he get it on those three I occasions? In 82, uh, when obviously he was looking for someone to replace Brad Gillis, but it went to Jake E. Lee. And uh, he thinks it had a lot to do with Sharon. And I remember Oz, he had uh, Alex Skolnick told him he had the gig. And uh, <coughs> she reneged on it. <coughs> but, wow. Well, that happens. And let's see. Tommy Lee Curtis, 1984 tour with Ozzy Osbourne. Captapultine, Motley Crue's career. And we know about that. Sometimes it takes someone... To take you out. Like, they took Metallica out, right? Wouldn't you say that Metallica broke it right about that time but also? The, the Ozzy is who took Metallica right. out to Remember break that? them during, that's when they, uh, during Master. Puppets. Right. That, that's what broke Metallica. Okay, so there's so, a couple instances. I guess they uh, they did that. It always can be nice. And maybe they could return a favor one of these days. You never know. You never know. Anyway. Yeah. Well, we are we just wanted to do an episode with you guys, tell you what's going on. I'm going to have some... Um, some interviews coming in. We're going to start getting the interviews rolling again. We're going to get back up there. I will do live from some time, from time to time, but I kind of got to, I kind of like doing it like this. It's just kind of how the show was built on. I want to definitely thank our, um, all of our endorsements, Death Wish Coffee. They've been with us from the beginning. 
Um, if you want to get a message from me or sent from me from someone else, go to cameo.com and I can send you a greeting. You know, if you got a birthday greeting or, or just had a baby or congratulations or a pep talk, go to Cameo. Also, if you want to eat hot sauce, I mean, they're, they're hella hot sauce. Hella hot, hot sauce. <laughs> go to Hella Hot Hot Sauce. If you want to get Zetro's Toxic Vault merchandise, go to seasonofmist.com. Season of Mist in the United States and in Europe. The great thing about Season of Mist is you can get any of the prints on anything. You get a Custom. black shirt, red shirt, small shirt, hoodie, uh, girly, strap shirt. They can do anything. It's a custom thing. That's why I signed up with them because some people go, oh, Zetro, you didn't have any smalls or you don't have any this or you don't have any 5X. You can go to Season of Mist. You can get a hoodie 5X. You can get a spaghetti strap that's a small, extra small. You can get anything. So definitely Season of Mist. And um, that's about it. Huh? And of course, Death Wish Coffee. We've already said that. But of course, Death Wish Coffee. You got to drink that stuff. So now you guys, keep subscribing to The Vault because the numbers are keeping going up. And of course, we make our living off of your comments. And we want to hear a good or a bad we don't really give a shit. So um, let us know what you think. Share this with other people. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe because it helps me out with YouTube and we can keep doing this and we are going to keep doing this. So we will get some interviews coming up here. Um, the, the next few uh, episodes, we will definitely get some interviews. Some people that definitely want to come in. So um, I will be uh, for me and um, some big ones. So I, so I got three right off the bat while I told him, Walt, and you guys will love them. So I'm going to get those in here. But thank you guys for being patient with me. Thank you for coming in the live and thank you for staying with the vault. And uh, <laughs> shit, Walt, we'll see these guys next time. If you see this, it worked. It worked. Huh? <laughs> if you see this, then we did good. All right. All right. See you guys in the see vault. Ya.